can. Can you hear me? Brilliant. Yes, I can hear you great. Thank you very much. Right, I'm just going to um, pop you through to the studio and you'll hear Russell uh, doing his link and then he'll come to you. Is that okay? Sure, that sounds great. Brilliant. Hold on there for me. Thank you. Okay. On audiobook or indeed written form or on Kindle or come check me on the 31st or the 1st of uh, November at the Hammersmith Apollo in London in all my glory ranting Look, doing blessings you've gone mad have I? what's the mad what type what manner of madness do you think it's because I've been in America a 40 minute yeah. excerpt from a book that you read <laughs> It was about three minutes, Matt, and this is one of the great classics of literature. And the reason I read it is because some say Melville and, and Moby Dick, in fact, were the first postmodern novel as he was flitting between, like, uh, literal stories of wailing, like, which he explains beautifully, and it feels sort of terrible and awful, but the sea as the perfect metaphor for consciousness. Also, the way he talks about spiritual and religious life is unbelievably complex duality of conscious like so land is like your normal life yeah you see the dark reality underneath so yeah that's that. right that's exactly what we're saying here that we have an insular tahiti of your own identity this is me hi i'm russell i don't like that you stood my toes and then but beneath it you are held by limitless consciousness and perhaps matthew when you're saying you know talking about conspiracy theories and why we have them the one reason i thought that might be is because each of us knows that we are bobbing about like a little thimble on an ocean of your own anatomy. You're not controlling your respiratory system. You're not controlling your own organs. So there is some powerful force that's controlling everything that you don't have direct access to. And I think it's a sort of a troubling notion for people. So when something fits that template, like, oh, there's these people that are controlling everything, then I think it's appealing. My personal belief is if you want to know who controls the world, look at who's got the most money and then going it's probably them place, <laughs> or who the system works for and like oh right this system seems to be working well for these people mm. and then like it's probably them but I don't you know you, the conspiratorial stuff I'm sure there are conspiracies yeah there are that of are course true. Yeah. And you wouldn't know if they were. Otherwise, there'd be no... I've said this since I was a little girl growing up in Sivkup. There'd be no such thing as top secret. They wouldn't have, like, top... You know, some of it is, oh, no, the Russians mustn't know that. But a lot of it is, if people find out that's true, they're going to go mental. Yeah, but then when you get to, like, the Earth's flat instead of a globe, Mm. then that's... I mean, you couldn't even cover that up. It would be a hard one to cover up, and I'd like to know the advantages of it. So we're going to actually find that out by talking to a man now called Mark Sargent. Mark published The Sky's the Limit, a book on flat earth clues in March 2016. He's also launched a flat earth clues app and has his own YouTube channel under his own name with 9 million views. He grew up on South Whidbey Island, Washington. Mark started his career playing computer games professionally in Colorado, which I've been to and it's nice. You've been there, haven't you? Yeah, wasn't that where you can't breathe very well? You can breathe well there, can't you? It's a very elevated position in the oxygen. Is it stage. elevated, mate? Or is it flat as a pancake? Mark, you're on the line. How's it going, Mark? Could you hear us? We're, we don't understand flat earth theory. <laughs> I can hear you, and thank you very much for having me. Oh, God, you've got a lovely voice. That's well, very beguiling. <laughs> well, I, have, I actually have my own little radio show that covers flat earth. So tell us about flat earth, because we actually don't understand yet, and we're pretty open-minded, and Matt in particular is very susceptible to basically anything you want him to believe in. So what is the... What's the advantage of the flat Earth theory? You know, even if it were true, like, sure. what's the, like, why would people deceive us into believing that the world was spherical? How does that? Okay. Uh, how is okay. that advantageous? In fact, let me let me give you a quick sixty-second breakdown because your listeners are probably going, "Holy smokes! What? How is this even possible?" The the short version yeah. is, and you'll appreciate this, Russell, is that all the world's a stage, and you, me, and everyone you know is on it. And that the United States and the Soviet Union figured it out in 1960 when they were looking for the borders and they've been trying to keep it a secret ever since. But as far as why, why you would do it, because yeah, every probably one in every 10 emails I get is why, why would you cover this thing up? What's the advantage of it? Mm. And the, there's three, there's three prongs to it. One is academic. So like, let's say tomorrow, the United Nations all of a sudden decides, like, oh yeah, by the way, you're living in a giant snow globe on somebody's desk. Cause that's really the type of dimensions we're talking about here. Uh, first off, academically, th- here's the reasons why you would keep this a secret, why you wouldn't tell anybody. Um, first one is academically, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, every astronomy and astrophysics department in every university ever would shut their doors automatically. And the remaining physical sciences, take your pick, uh, geology, hydrology, biology, anything with an o- ology next to it, they would have to retool and rebuild from the ground up. That's academics right away. Second would be monetarily economics. 
the uh, world stock markets would have to shut down for at least a month because you know any. Hold on a minute. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Why? I mean, I, I understood that first bit that it it, it sort of it undermines a previously held academic opinion, sure. which itself, though, was founded on the assumption that, the, you know, we began with the world is flat, it looks flat. Huh. Then, you know, Copernicus, Galileo, Endeavour, space missions, unless all of that stuff, you know, I guess your idea is that none of that stuff is real or true. Yeah. But then, you know, what was the advantage in, in abandoning the initial position of mm -hmm. the Earth is flat? It's not right. like, hold on a minute, let's tell everyone that Earth's, gr like, round. We'll yeah. earn a few quid out of that. Then we'll go back to saying it's flat. You know what I mean? Like, there's no... I can't see a definitive. It's not like going, you know, for example, other conspiracy theories like, you know, oh, JFK was murdered by the government, and that's a way of manipulating right. power, or, you know, even more contemporaneous th theories around yeah. you know, sort of terrorism, for example. You sort of think, oh, it's the manipulation of power and the management of populations. Right. This particular theory seems like sort of almost gl gleefully atavistic, and I, I can't see the advantage of it. The. Think of it this way: the institute, like the money bit. You said the money bit. Oh yeah, yeah, the money, the money, money, the money like, oh, the bit. Flat, shut the stock exchange. You'll you'll appreciate the the third part more than the second part. You keep saying I'll appreciate it. Yeah, I know, no, I know, I know you will. I know you will because I was listening uh, as I was as I was being muted. What you guys were talking about, which is economically, uh, if everybody's in the same boat, that well, you know how everything can. Uh, so many different little things can make the stock market jittery. You know, it doesn't take much. I mean, honestly, if President Trump caught a cold tomorrow and they thought it was pneumonia, the market would like start twitching. Imagine if all of a sudden you said, "Oh yeah, by the world, by the way, the world is is not a globe like we've been teaching for the last four hundred something years. It's it's actually you know a, a snow globe. You know, it's a it's a covered and closed structure. The markets would be, would go into absolute turmoil because they wouldn't know what to make of it. What what do you why, do? It, why? Because implicit in that is our entire reality is somehow constructed that it's not an organic sort of plan planetary astronomical body but some sort of constructs like on that film the Truman Show is exactly oh yeah the Truman Show is exactly what we're talking about here you know the Truman Show if you kind of look at it from the outside Terry, he's ahead of the curve if you <laughs> excuse the pun <laughs> I like that. that thing that's definitely not curved yes he I mean if that structure was only 20 miles wide how how far out could you build this thing before you could hide an entire civilization in it. You know, it was, in Truman, it was easy. In fact, the Truman Show, the only reason it was even a movie is because of the production value failures. You know, a spotlight falling down and the elevator screwing up and where he finally discovered it. But if you built a structure that oh, was... You like that film. I really do like it. It was, it was, it was perfect in, the, in this capacity because it gave you an example of how easy it is to do, along with um, M. Night Shyamalan's The Village, where he, talk, where he said, look, children believe anything you tell them. So if you put them in a wildlife preserve and build a town and make it look like the 1800s, and you tell them that, why wouldn't they believe that? And after I mean, this I'm down with. I'm down with that kind of stuff. I'm down that our, our, right. our perception of reality is right. built upon narratives. Right. Uh, but the thing I'm still struggling with is the advantage of it. Okay, okay, okay. Of, let's, like, you know, let's is it the imp oh, don't let them find out that this is like, what you're saying is a constructed reality under a dome where our extraterrestrial overlords experiment on our reality, introduce different genes, that there's a superior consciousness that we're interacting with and only a small percentage of the population know about it. Because I think that could still be true no. even if the world was a globe you know, oh that sure doesn't, that doesn't necessarily get in the way of that idea you uh, know, no, if there is an advanced civilization capable of constructing such a beautiful excuse me illusion then i did a little blow off then then <laughs> that then that they'd be able to conduct that just as easily on a sphere and like what does this mean about our studies of sort of like sub quant uh, sub particular uh, matter you know because that too has certain geometric geometric features that fit in with its um macro corollary oh, i.e. Right. that the sphere is the fundamental building block of the physical plane oh yeah you're and and you're absolutely right the the quantum physics and everything about astrophysics would be turned upside down Let, let's cut to the chase here if this was let's take economic out of it because people can debate that all they want but i absolutely know you would have to shut down the world markets the the, the biggest part would be the spiritual part which is if we are built the narrative changes, meaning we are created. And now I'm not saying necessarily, you know, is it intelligent design? Yeah, probably. Is it the handprint of God on the outside of this thing? Well, that would uh, make a lot of people very, very nervous. Uh, if you didn't want to, if you if you want to be the ultimate power, you have to be the ultimate power. You can't have something outside. You know, the, the governments and the powers that be 
have a, a firm grasp on things because there's no one bigger than them. Not, not, not okay. definitely. You know, so as a paradigm, it's the same as, as if, uh, if we discovered extraterrestrials or, you know, if, in fact, ancient religious ideologies were literally true. That, like, by, by very deferring similar. to some sort of supreme power, exactly. our own reality is undermined. Now, uh, if you think my questions were top-notch, get ready for something <laughs> that's going to shrivel you up into a pippin, because coming right out of left field is Britain's own favourite little sweetie pie, Matt Morgan. <laughs> Okay. Hello, Mark. Hi. <laughs> how do you explain? How do you explain then if the if the world's flat, mm -hmm. flight paths? Because if you look at a flight tracker, you can see flights going every way around the world. And well, they go out of one side of the little map, and they appear immediately on the other side because they've gone around the globe. How do you explain that? That is a very interesting. People have been at people, you know, there's there's public on those flights, and they've gone from Australia round to you know the oh, west coast of america sure they have they have actually but at the same time there's a lot of things interesting especially in the southern hemisphere flights first off gps the you know the global positioning system which was designed by the united states department of defense back in the 90s you know some military application supposedly blanket coverage with 32 something satellites all over there there is huge massive dead spots so when you're following these planes down there in the southern hemisphere you're gonna love this watch them as they go offshore maybe 150 200 miles once they get to a certain point now that graphic may still be there but the uh latitude and longitude for those planes immediately drops into approx approximated or estimated mode and it stays in that mode which basically means we have no idea where that plane is but the graphics there so we're just going to keep it going and the or it'll blink off entirely and then it will magically appear within ground radar range at its location. That's the, that's the first thing so about the sun. That's an answer. Go ahead. It is an answer. But well, I, I liked that, Mark. I, I like that as an answer. And what I suppose, look, what I'm getting is, I, told, I was telling Matt earlier on, mm -hmm. but uh, last night while I was doing one of my brilliant new dreams I'm working on, <laughs> I stirred and awoke, and there was this sort of geometric subset in my consciousness immediately on awakening, where I thought the uh, indigenous language of the mind is geometry, and all subsequent forms of semaphore are applications that the culture endows us with, but there is a literal and essential truth. Now, if there is some literal essential truth of which all material reality is some projection, the laws of physics would occasionally mutate, which is like, you know, I'm not the first person to say that. I believe old Einstein said something similar, i.e. Uh, time is relative, or, sure. you know, um, like, uh, or Planck and uh, Heisenberg talk about the... Uh, uh, mutability of physical law. Uh -huh. So, like, I, I like your theory in one sense that it in, in, uh, invites us to investigate the, the nature of our reality. Uh -huh. I think keep saying snow globes going to be a problem, mate, because <laughs> snow globes are funny little things, aren't they? Okay, snow okay. Globes. Well, I, I, I I'm trying. Snow I, globe, like you know, what I mean, it's not a serious thing, a snow globe. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to, I have to use some of those. Use another one. Okay, uh, sports stadium. How's that? A planetarium. All Ter right, it's a bit better, I suppose. No, actually, I prefer snow globe. Snow globe. <laughs> now, should we well, no, no, the interview being a bit silly just <laughs> to change the vibe? Okay. No, no, I think I think you've done well there, mate. But I don't know. So say right, say you get it out, and everyone goes bloody hell. Mm -hmm. This is an artificial reality. We're in some sort of ecosystem, mm -hmm. like uh, that bloody place down Cornwall. What's that called? Do you know that place down Cornwall? Eden Project, yes. Yeah, we're in some ecological system where everything's being controlled. Sure. Or like Elon Musk says, this is a sort of a virtual reality. Uh -huh. And that's, you know, that means that the laws of physics are irrelevant, whether it's spherical or flat or whatever its dimensions. It's being bloody conjured up in our own consciousness, which uh -huh. I think is, you know, a pretty cool idea in sure. itself. Um, you know, what, what's the advantage, mate? If you get it out there, what happens? And, you know, other than that stock market crash you keep going on. About, well, well, again. We it's a snow globe. I, I, stay too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I try not to. I try to do a glass half full if, if I can, because you know, I, I th yeah, you could go the doom and gloom path if you wanted. You know, where the stock markets potentially crash, and you know, there's pitchforks and torches in the I mean, streets. That'll you... happen anyway, one way or another, well, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, of course. Meteorological I... event, you know, some other crisis. I mean, every we're all doomed. That's that's a fact. Uh, on an individual why level. Why doesn't the water fall off? 
No, oh, good. Because the Antarctica isn't the just the boundary of this place. When every other continent looks pretty much the same. In fact, if you want to know what it looks like from the top down, you're really looking at the UN flag. So if it's like a dinner plate, the UN flag stamped on top of it, the North Pole's at the center of it. But when you get to the outer edge, the what you're looking at is basically Antarctica. So the Antarctic coastline, Antarctic as a continent is is just amazing because it's about 200, no, we're talking not, not not talking games of thrones but it's 200 to 300 foot wall of ice straight up at the edge and then once you get to the top of it it starts sloping up really fast to about 14,000 feet and most of the continent is above 14,000 feet circles all around so the water's not going anywhere you're you know what's underneath What's underneath? If that? we dig down, what's underneath? That's a network a, that's... of tunnels, a network of funnels, a funny little goblin guy. What's what? underneath? What's underneath? <laughs> Tell us what's underneath, Mark Sergeant. What's underneath? Not what's underneath you, not your undercarriage. I mean, what's underneath this dirty little disc we call snow globe? By the way, did you just write that just now, or did you have that before? That little song that you sang. came out of my brain. Been fully working formed. on that for many that's, years. That's <laughs> awesome. <Me and> <laughs> <laughs> been working, waiting to meet someone called Mark Sergeant. <laughs> that's really, really great. Ah, uh, luckily. Oh, thank uh, you, darling. Now, go on. What is underneath? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is underneath? That's a fantastic question because when you do a cross section, you open up any school textbook and you look at the core of the earth, you see those those wonderful bands, you know, red and orange and yellow and white, right? And I go, wow, those are really great. That's a really great cross section. How? What happens? Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Cross section. Cross section. There could be, couldn't there? Is it not feasible, Mark? Yes. That within there would be. A network very much like a honeycomb, and within each cell a fluid, and within each fluid a larvae, each one more <laughs> symmetrical than the large majesty. Uh, many Pop. were the long winter nights where your late father and I would scamper giddy schoolgirls into the courtyard, our dressing gowns flailing behind us. Heroic in their way, the moonlight glinting on our bare skin. We would spot one of the lowly creatures of the courtyard, a tomcat, or perhaps a whippet hound, then gripping it by its thin hips, twanging the harp strings of its tendons, we would flip it onto its back, and ignoring its scrambling, would prize apart its thighs, revealing its genitalia. Then your late father, Majesty, would take from his inside pocket a vanity kit. There within was an emery board. He would take it and file down the tip of the hound's member till it was completely flat, revealing the aforementioned cross-section, within wow. which would be a honeycomb. And within each shell of the honeycomb is a larvae, and the circle of life begins again. That's impressive. Honest to God, that was, that was <laughs> really Mark, something. Mark, now that I have been working on. I, all right, but you did not derail me because I, I had the answer in my head the entire time. When you drill down the deep, <laughs> the, the, you're lovely. You held on to it. Like I did. There's no talking. way you were. I was listening to the whole thing. I'm going. There's no way you're gonna turn unless you actually brought me into that little thing at the end. And I was like, eh, I don't know. The the deepest hole ever drilled is, is <laughs> deepest hole ever drilled is eight miles. No, the cross sections of the earth, everything you see, uh, read in school books, is meaningless. Uh, the deepest hole ever drilled, but one was by the Russians and one by the Germans. There's nothing. You know, once they get down to eight miles, there's you know, we the, the drill bits fail. So tr ask mainstream science what's below us, below eight miles. There, everything you see in the books is a complete fabrication. Mark, I tell you what, mate. There's yeah. no reason like. To be honest, my um, belief that the world is a globe is not built on any personal experience. It's only built on what I've been taught. And at various times, human beings like us have been taught that different races are inferior, different genders are inferior, that it's okay for one group of people to subjugate another. So the belief of hum beliefs of human beings is fraught with flaws, paradox, and ignorance. So right. uh, I certainly wouldn't ridicule your, ridicule your beliefs. I personally don't agree with it, but I do really like it. And I like your personal spirit of investigation. And it's something I'm going to be looking out for now, particularly that bit in response to Matt's question. We do have to go for some adverts now because this is a mainstream media network held together, as you know, by our capitalism, consumerism and commerce, and uh, we all play our part in that. Thanks for coming on, mate. Was, you've been a great guest. Thank you. It was a real pleasure, guys. You're Thanks, lovely. Mark. You've got a lovely voice. I'd listen to you say anything. <laughs> all right. Take it, take it easy. Take it easy, Mark Sargent. All See right. you later, mate. All right. Bye-bye. Well, you really showed me up there, didn't you, mate? <laughs> yeah, I showed you up. Yeah. You did. Bye.